Hi! <laughs> I'm a little bit shy today. I hope um, everyone is well. Oh, it has been so good here. So good here. There's been very few police sirens. So it's been it's been it's been good. It's been nice and quiet. Except for me like setting off the smoke alarm a few times. Oops. And where I live, just outside my window here, there are so many beautiful trees and some birdies. Yeah, there's lots of bats as well. There was like a... M I saw this bat on Saturday night and it was a monster. I've never seen a bat like that fat before. But anyway. I've got... um, I have a beer as well. So I'm just relaxing. Relaxing. So, um, so what I'm going to be talking about may be triggering to some people, but everything that I do comes from a place of love. In this case, it's also coming from a place of um, love and first-hand experience. So, I know that I've made a video. I know that I've made a video for trauma survivors. But what I'm actually going to talk about now is actual trauma. So... What is trauma? Okay, we all know what trauma is. So there's two definitions for trauma. So the first definition is serious injury to the body as form of physical violence or an accident. Like, you know, blunt force trauma, which is like being stabbed to death with like something that isn't sharp. Yeah, that's an example. The second definition is an experience that causes severe anxiety or emotional distress, such as rape or combat. Memories that persist after a trauma occurs or an event or a situation that causes great disruption or suffering. Okay. okay. And there's also post-traumatic stress disorder. So, we all know what post-traumatic stress disorder is, but the definition is a psychiatric disorder resulting from a traumatizing experience, such as torture, rape, or military combat, characterized by recurrent flashbacks of the traumatic event, nightmares, persistent negative emotions such as anger, fear, or shame, and difficulty experience or difficulty experiencing positive emotions. It's also not something that has happened to you, but say you've just like walked outside and you've seen a and you've and you saw a car accident and you saw people dying. Like that is also another example of post traumatic stress, like how people can develop post traumatic stress. So it's not something that just happens to you, like your own personal experience, but witnessing something traumatic like that as well, that can also cause post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, so um, I actually touched on something the other day because I had post-traumatic stress a few days ago, a few days ago. Um, so in the last video that I made discussing hate and where hate comes from, um, I spoke about a stepdad that I had once, what he did to my mother, and how that was triggered was there was like a dismembered body part that was found in the water, 
and that body part had a tattoo with three names it was like a love heart with three different names on it and it could have been like a, a mother's like the name of that person's children whatever so that's what like brought on my traumatic stress from childhood right so I'm actually going to speak about trauma okay so um yeah continuing on from that that is something that I never discussed with anyone whatsoever in my entire life not even a counselor not even a therapist so the, st the stepdad that I had then his name is Scott Morrison I looked you up I looked you up on Facebook you are fucking ugly you are uglier than you were back then you look like you look like cancer well you are cancer you're a fucking walking plague but anyway so that creep um at the time that my mother met this fuckhead that fuckhead she was going through like a really really stressful time because she was a single parent and she was going through a custody battle so she was really 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 stressed out so this fuckhead made a potion well he told mum that it was a potion and what he put in it was like he killed a mouse and he put like he dissected this mouse and put like a, its liver in this potion and other shit and he was really dirty as well so when I moved into this place into my apartment a year oh my god it's only it's been almost a whole year wow it only feels like just a few months because like this year has gone by so slow anyway he was really dirty yeah he was really dirty he always used to like pick his nose and like eat his boogers and his earwax and he used to like clip his toenails and eat all the shit that was in his toenails really really disgusting creep anyway yeah mom told me that when I moved in here she said when you make your coffee in the morning check the kettle to make sure that there's no cockroaches in the kettle because she remembers when she first started dating like that freak yeah you are a fucking freak and I'm gonna give it to you and I'm gonna give it to you good now all right and there isn't a damn thing anyone can uh, do or say so and yeah she said that she was got like she was always like when they were dating she was always going over there for coffee to his place for coffee and she went to fill up the kettle and there was a dead cockroach inside the kettle and she doesn't know how long that she doesn't know how long it was in the kettle for but he was always like making her coffee with like a dead cockroach in the water it was disgusting so yeah that's why I always like check my kettle in the morning before I make coffee just in case yeah and yeah it was fucked because she got really 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 sick from whatever he tried to give her and yeah she actually almost died she almost died I remember I don't know who it was but we were children This was like 96 97 and I don't remember who it was but they told us like get ready because your mom is going to die so <sighs> but she didn't she didn't she um she 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 got better after a while so whatever he gave her made her very very sick and she almost died and I hated his guts I hated his guts forever after that 
And, yeah, they stayed together, and then she married him. Um, okay. So I'll give you, like, the backstory about this Scott Morrison cunt. Is he had four children. He had four girls in his previous marriage. His ex-wife chucked him out. And at the time my mother met him, he was unemployed. He was going from, like, job to job. And he was, like, he is, he was really, really ugly. And he has... He has this lazy eye that always creeped me out. Okay, so... Uh, the entire time that he was our stepdad, I hated his guts. I hated his guts because of what he did to my mother. And whenever he was around, I just ignored him. I just ignored him. And nothing pisses a narcissist off more especially a psychopathic narcissist when you ignore them so he always used to say to me i will not be ignored so i just kept on ignoring him and then he would just like pick fights and pick fights and pick fights and pick fights until until there was like fireworks um, so, for example, like, just one incident that I can think of. So, I was ignoring him, because he's just a piece of shit. And he would, like, come into the kitchen where I was, if I was, like, making myself a sandwich or whatever I was doing in the kitchen. And he would push me. Then I would say, don't fucking push me. And then I would go and tell that to my mother. And then he would say, no, no, she's lying, she's lying, she's lying. So it actually got to the point where he was like that. Hmm. He was just like a piece of shit. Whenever I did talk to him, I, I would like call him a C word or a piece of shit or whatever. Every name under the sun, because that's what he is. Um... But... So that incident with my mom happened when I was like, I don't know, seven or eight or nine. I don't know how old I was in like 96. When I was, t when I was like going through puberty, he asked me to show him my pubic hair. And I said, no, I said no. And he fucking hated me. He was always targeting me always starting shit with me and this is like a grown ass man in like his, his 30s or 40s and he was sick he was sick i caught him looking in the window when my sis in the bathroom window when my sister was having a shower and also like she was she's sick as well like my sister is sick as well She's fucked in the head, is what I mean. And I caught him as well looking at me in my bedroom when I was getting changed. But he was like mowing the lawn. He was just like, you know, looking through my curtains. Oh, he saw my boobs. And my bush. Um. Yeah. During high school, that was the fucking worst so oh my god i this is i did very poorly in high school so it actually got to the point where i couldn't go into exams i could not go to exams there was a one incident that happened where it was like exam period I can't remember what year it was, I think it was like grade 11. And he had taken my mother's credit card and he bought heaps of shit online. And they blamed, and he said that it was me. So the morning of my exam block, my mother was waiting for me to wake up. And she said that she saw me taking her credit card out of her purse. And then said that I bought something online, right? So we just like kept on fighting and fighting and fighting because like I didn't do it. So 
I picked up the phone to call the police. And as soon as I picked up the phone to call the police, Scott came out of the bedroom and he admitted that it was like that it was him that, that did it. But this was after about like an hour of screaming and yelling at each other. And because of the post-traumatic stress from everything, I actually could not make it to my exam in to my exam block in high school. So yeah. I failed a lot of classes, actually, because I kept my old report cards for my grade 8 and grade 9. I got excellent A's, B's, and then, like, just as I got older, like, I just, like, get, kept getting, like, more crap at, at school, but it doesn't matter. Then, when I was 18 or 19... I was having a driving lesson and I caught him cheating on my mom and I was so happy I was like yes yes he's gonna be out he's gonna be fucking out and the woman that he cheated on my mum with had two small boys okay this freak was is a pedophile so my brother was already in puberty i was 19 and my sister was already like moved out and with her boy with her boyfriend then whoever she was dating at the time so he actually ended up moving on to a, a woman that had small children Yep. Then eventually when mum kicked him out, I remember coming home from work and all of his shit was gone. It was just out of the house. And I was so happy because I'm like, yes, I'm never going to see you again. Uh, hmm. And I crashed his car on purpose. I said it was an accident, but I crashed on purpose. When, um, after a good friend of mine committed suicide in grade 12, I took an, oh, I have tried MDMA before. So I had MDMA and then like the next day I was like, uh, I'm going to crash your car. <laughs> so I did. And like mom told me that every now and then, Every now and then he sends her messages, like he sends her text messages, like happy birthday or whatever. Okay. So, first of all, first of all, um, since I spoke about that, I, I just feel so good. It's been really easy to get out of bed. It's been very, very easy to get out of bed the last couple of days. I think it was like two or so days that I spoke about it for the first time ever. Because, like, I believe that was an attempted murder on my mom. I do believe that it was an attempted murder on my mom. Like, what the fuck kind of person would give a woman something made that has, like, a mouse liver in it when they're going through a custody battle and because i've been dealing like you know because i have been dealing with murders and daisy gave a very very detailed description of uh these murders and these bodies that have been dumped into the water. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been true, very very, it's been very very triggering. But I spoke about it, and I actually feel fine now because like I'm actually no longer holding that in. So um, you know, this is why I talk about the importance of self-love okay so this person i don't want to say its name is a psychopath 
his target was my mother. A single mother, really, really stressed out. So yeah, that was just like a really, really easy target. She was, like, I remember, I remember back then, it was, it was hard for her. I remember that time. I could remember her almost dying as well. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Very, she was a really, she was, she was messed up. So predators can sense vulnerability. She was an easy target for him. That's why I say it's always important to love yourself first. Because if you don't, then you are going to fall for the first fucking freak that you meet. I'm not saying that, like, you know, everyone is a freak. But that's how you uh, get murdered. End up murdered. But it's also because she had three children that hadn't hit puberty yet. So, like, what he was doing was he was, like, he was... I need a drink. I need a sip of my drink. Mmm. So what he was doing is he was like, you know, being, well, pretending to be like, you know, really, really sweet and supportive of my mother. But then, you know, like to lure her in, to lure her in, love bombing, as they say, we're going to talk about that later on. Then he had an opportunity to poison her with his mouse liver potion and oh uh, yeah look what happened so yeah this is why um you know when people are going through like you know really 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 traumatic events in their life to you know that's a perfect opportunity to start your spiritual path if you are not already on it because every single opportunity every single opportunity that you have to build your connection with God and the Most High. Take it. Embrace it like with a bear hug. You're not going to get happiness from any external factors, including other people, if you are not like healed and whole within yourself first. My hair got caught in my ring and it was pulling. So yeah, this is why I've never actually really... This is why I've never really been in relationships anyway. This is why I'm still uh, not... Really wanting to be in a relationship either. And so that was a very, very like... Um, that was a lesson that I learned from a very, very young age. Okay? And I'm seeing the exact same thing happening now with the fuckheads that I'm dealing with. Remember that video that I made? I don't know what video it was. I think it was like about boundaries or something. I'm pretty sure it's, I've talked about it in like more than one video. Where Spiritual OG said there is like one group of people targeting an individual, which is me, and another com community to cover up a murder. So what I'm actually notice, noticing, like what I actually did notice is the same lesson that I learned from a previous stepdad that I had. This fuckhead, like Scott, claimed to be all about like, you know, spirituality and making potions and blah, 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 blah. but he was a fucking freak. He was a, he was a freak, including a pedophile. The 
the fuckheads that are hiding a lot in their Nazi camp, including murders, are claiming to be spiritualists, preaching about meditation and God and the most high and... <sighs> but, but... Plotting murders, committing murders, getting people set up. God knows what else. <sighs> so, the beginning of this year, I can't believe it's November. I can't believe it's nearly Christmas. Wow. Wow. I love Christmas time. Halloween and Christmas are my two favorite uh, holidays. <laughs> So, um, yeah, at the beginning of the year, I started dating again. I was seeing this guy, but the third time I saw him, the third time I saw him, I noticed that he was trying to trauma bond me. So what is trauma bonding? I saw this this morning on Instagram and I saved it so I could share it with everyone. What is trauma bonding? Traumatic bonding is a strong emotional tie in relationships where one person intermittently, intermittently torments, hurts, abuses, and, and intimidates the other, followed by displays of affection and care. Usually certain dynamics are present, such as there is a power imbalance, with one person dominating and controlling the other. Abuse is sporadic, intermittent, intermittent, highly positive and care to abusive. The masking and distort and distorting of abuse is allows the survivor to stay within the relationship and the abuser's behavior becomes normalized, developing a high tolerance for, for abuse. In order to survive the abuse, the survivor tends to deny, disassociate, dis, and compartmentalize the traumatic bonding, and instead places all focus on the good and caring aspects. Okay, so oh, this is too adult for me. So, for example, so, they're, like, in and out, in and out, in and out. So, they'll be very, very, like, when you first meet them, they're loving, they're caring, they're sweet, they compliment you all the time. Next, they're, like, next minute, they're cold and distant. Then they're back to that. And then they're cold and distant. But then they become more and more abusive, yeah, it's like a, it's weird. So as soon as I noticed that, I cut it off. I cut it off straight away. That's called trauma bonding. So he tried to trauma bond me. But I was really disgusted with him anyway because like the second time we hung out, he farted in front of me. So I was turned off. Well, he was in the bathroom taking a piss and he farted and I heard him so I was turned off and then I noticed that he was like that so I was like eh uh so I just like cut it off straight away straight away so yeah that's how he tried to have power over me but because I really like I already know I already know um how to read people anyway so didn't really work with me at all yeah so um oh yeah for all four of Scott's daughters for all four of Scott's daughters man I hated every time you dirty bitches came over because you always gave us nits you always gave us nits I remember my mum picking the nits out of your head. It was disgusting. So you wouldn't give it to us. And 
I remember the abusive letters you used to send in the mail to us um, about child support. Well, one of the many arguments that your father had with my mum, they were arguing because he did not want to pay your child support. My mum pay paid his child support that he was giving you. He did not give a fuck about any of you. And as for you, like, always starting fights with, with us, saying, you stole my dad, you stole my dad. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And you didn't miss out on anything. You didn't miss out on anything. So, uh, the next question is, why do narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, why do they have children? Why do they have children when they are incapable? Like when they're when they're a piece of shit, why do they actually have children? Why do they have children? Because when a baby is born, all it has it is is its parents. All it has is, is its parents. That's all it has. So that's like the perfect supply for psychopathic narcissistic parents so they can traumatize like their children and do like the whole like in and out wishy-washy thing and to like you know fuck up and traumatize their children's life and I saw it like I saw it with my stepdad like he didn't fucking care about his kids he didn't want to see his kids he didn't even want to pay their child support I remember like I remember that argument that my parents had because she said that if he doesn't pay the child support then he's gonna go to court but he still wouldn't budge so she ended up paying like like the child support that they got actually came out of my mum's wallet not their father's wallet um, but as I said, then he moved on to someone that had small, I think she had like two or three like small boys, prepubescent boys to like uh, move on to and traumatize. So this is why I went off my rocker a few weeks ago when I went to the doctor and there was like some bitch that came that was gang stalking me that had like a lazy eye she looked right at me and the other eye was like over there somewhere rolling oh that's what freaked me out because like that was a trigger for me that was a trigger for me that was from like unresolved childhood trauma so um there have been so many things that i've seen on the news and in the media where you know uh How many partners have murdered their spouses or girlfriends or boyfriends? And the, the victim's families is always like, she was such a nice, like they were such a, like the victim was like such a nice, sweet and caring person. They didn't deserve that. They deserve better. Yes, 100%. But they didn't do like the inner work. They just got into a relationship with that person just to like fill the void of what they thought was missing it's sad it is sad uh i'm not gonna play it now because it's it's really upsetting to watch there was like this mother that was her her daughter was murdered was found mur murdered and dismembered and she was screaming at her daughter's partner that murdered her and she was just screaming her head off it was really really sad to watch so um this is just some um, something to help people that are going through trauma or very very traumatic events in their life or they're thinking about dating again after being through like something extremely traumatic or like looking for love again after being through something extremely traumatic okay so first of all 
be extremely careful with how much you share with how much you share because psychopaths will use that as your weakness the right person will understand how to love you properly based on what you've already been through but the psychopaths will use that as your weakness that's why it's extremely important to do the inner work and inner healing first then when you notice like patterns like the example that i just gave run 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 screaming for the hills and don't look back all right so the other night i spoke about that thing with my mom almost dying the other day for the first time and i said like that was like that i post-traumatic stress from um like seeing that dismembered leg with children's or whoever's name's tattooed on her severed leg that's what it looks like that that triggered me but as soon as i spoke about it i felt so much better so much better because i've been harboring that for i don't know how many years now i don't even i can't even remember how old i am now well, I was born in 88, so that makes me 33. And I don't know how old I was in 96, 97. <laughs> I was 8. I was 8. Yeah, I was 8 years old when that happened. Yeah, so for 25 years, I've been carrying that um, around. But no one heard anything from me. No one heard anything from me since then. So, yesterday I went into the city to buy my vape juice. It's not safe to be uh, screaming, like screaming down the street on a motorbike because it's raining. Just saying. You're headed straight for the morgue. You're not disrupting my life. You're just like endangering your own. But anyway, I went into the city to buy my vape juice and there were these like dirty ass bitches that were outside my outside the vape store that I shop at and they were on their phones. They were on their phones like, you know, stalking me. And I was like, mm -hmm, la, just like down the street. And then when I was walking up to the to get the bus home, there was like a police truck. It didn't say police rescue on it. it. Didn't say police rescue on it. It was just like a police truck. So I don't know if it was like full of cops or whatever. And it did not bother me at all. I was just like, mm. now because I grew up in a house where it was very, very loud, like there was always screaming, always fighting, there was always like some shit going on. That's why I have anxiety. That's why I need to be left the fuck alone a lot. This is why I don't get into relationships. Unless they're really like, unless it's like, unless it's like someone special, then no. Forget about it, man. Because um, I set the smoke alarm off a lot because of my vaping. The noise triggers me. It triggers me. And then I have a meltdown. Yesterday I set it off and it was loud. And I got a towel and I was like, you know, trying to like, you know, fan the smoke alarm so it would like stop. And... It didn't trigger me. I wasn't triggered at all. Even I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I was like, I'm fixed. Or I'm healing at least. So that was good. Like, yesterday, it's, it's been a good couple of days anyway. So there is fuckheads. That's an example of how fuckheads, like, you know, use stuff against you as a weakness. So they think, like, they think... They probably assumed because of something that I shared, that I opened up about, that I was going to, I don't know, still be like, you know, hurt or upset or whatever the fuck. But I said it. 
and I feel fine. I feel fine now. So yeah. But then there have been people that have been putting like amazing posts on Instagram just to let them know, just to let me know that they're thinking of me and how to help me get through it. So it's lovely. It is. It is. So that's just an example of like, you know, just be careful, like how much you share. That's why therapy is so good. So good. It's beneficial and it's confidential as well. So like your therapist is not allowed to share anything with anyone. Like with the stuff that, you know, Britney Spears built a plane. Like I live, I live not far from the airport so that's why there's always like planes coming and going oh my god so a few weeks ago can't remember when it was it was before i snapped before i like really snapped the night before then there was like a police helicopter like flying past my apartment and oh, it was really close and really loud and i was watching the avengers anyway like with the thing that you know britney spears you know, went through. Oh, I am so glad, like, that is behind her now. I am so glad for her. I am so glad for her. And it made me cry. Tears of joy, of course. Um, you know, when uh, there were celebrities like, you know, Lady Gaga and I can't remember who else. Like... You know, saying really, really nice things and, you know, speaking up about, you know, how badly women get treated in the entertainment industry. But we all know, we all know that celebrities have haters. So that's how they're going to use, like, you know, something against her to, like, you know, try and upset her. That's why, uh, uh you know, when, when celebrities go through, like, something really public, so what's the first thing that I can think of at the top of my head that I did not like at all? I don't This would have been very, very humiliating and traumatic. So with Khloe Kardashian and the Jordan Woods and Tristan scandal that went on, that would have been fucking humiliating. That would have been humiliating. Because, yeah, there are sickos that are out there that prey on other people's pain and misery. That would have been fucking humiliating to go through something like that. That's why I don't like the paparazzi at all. I mean, like, with Instagram now, like, everyone's got their own, like, Instagram. Who doesn't have Instagram? Even I have Instagram, and I hate social media. So that kind of puts you guys out of a job, doesn't it? Hopefully your, go your job will just, like, poof, disappear, and there won't be any paparazzi. Mm-hmm. So I can only just imagine what people, like, you know, were saying about her during that time a lot. Because, like, you know, haters, like, they hate. That's, that's the only... That's the purpose that they think they have in life, is to, like, be disgusting, be internet trolls and psychos. So I can just imagine she would have gotten a lot of shit from trolls as well. They were, like, laughing and whatever. I don't think it's funny at all. I don't think people that are going through, I don't think, pe no, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I do not like that at all, when people like prey on other people's misery. That's disgusting. That is disgusting. That's another thing they need to look out for as well. Are you around scum that just sit on their couch, on their mum, on their on their mum's couch, trolling people? Is that the kind of people that you're around? You're in the vicinity of a psycho. If they're doing that, just imagine what else they're capable of. Whew. 
what do you do with someone that is going through trauma or has PTSD? Well, the first thing is boundaries. The first thing is boundaries. So a boundary is an unwritten law. It's just like decency, like their own space, privacy, space and privacy. If they want to talk about it, cool. If they don't, if they don't want to talk about it, don't force it out of them. Don't force it out of them. Be there when you need them. Just be there when you need them. Because this is what I actually realized is that well for one there's like there's no time stamp on healing you can't say okay you're going to be healed by the 14th of october some people go through things that they're never ever ever going to recover from just remember that i think like i just learned to live I learnt to live and deal with it. I didn't think I would ever heal from it until like yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I just don't think that, I, I think that some things like people just don't ever recover from at all. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm really laughing because I remember this this morning. It's kind of gross. It's kind of gross. Actually, it's really gross. So, <laughs> when I read ages ago on social media that these people, those disgusting creeps were trying <laughs> <laughs> were fucking around with my toilet to get a urine sample to find out if I was pregnant or not for one I thought that was disgusting and two I always peed I always peed in like the shower or like the basin or the kitchen sink if the bathroom was like you know being used the only time that i peed in the toilet is when i was like you know taking a crap at the same time especially if i knew it was gonna be like one of those like you know real sloppy poos because, like, it was just funny to, like, you know, watch them play in my shit. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's what a boundary is. Also, like, you know, people's, like, privacy. Beloved in the building. I saw a flash behind me. But, yeah, now I just, like, look back at that and I, I just laugh because it is really funny because it's, fucking disgusting at the same time it is disgusting at the same time yeah so um i mean like i said like my neighbor can get post-traumatic stress like now he could walk outside and god forbid this actually happens god forbid this actually happens because it's raining it's beautiful weather. It's nice and rainy. It's not as cold as I want it to be. He could walk outside and witness a car accident. And see someone die. And he could get trauma and tr post-traumatic stress from that. It comes in all different forms and shapes and sizes um 
And that's what I've noticed, like, with these fuckheads as well that I deal with. So, um, yeah, fuckface, Kansas Marine to Terror, like, you know, he's committed murder. He admitted to having HIV. He admitted to having HIV. And he said that I gave it to him, but I don't have HIV. Then, um, my test results, someone, uh uploaded my test results on social media without my permission i mean not that i have anything to hide or anything but that's doctor patient confidentiality so like that fuckhead because he's a psychopath and a narcissist like he was like trying to isolate me to get me murdered to have like you know, no support no nothing but the thing is, is that, like, I am comfortable and complete and happy within myself. So I actually, like, don't need, I don't have the need to, like, you know, seek external factors, you know, to make me feel whole and complete. That's something that I've done for myself and I have done forever. That's why I have absolutely no problem, like, cutting people off like that. I don't give a fuck how good looking you are. If you disrupt my peace and my... If you disrupt my peace or you give me, like, that disgusting vibe, like, your energy is disgusting, then I'll cut you off like that. That's why I really like hearing, that's why I really, really, really love hearing that people have gone into their spiritual path or they've turned religious and built a very, very strong connection with God. Um, from dealing with trauma. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Because just look at how much shit goes on in the world. How, like, there is, there is so many sickos out there. That's so many sickos out there. That's how the predators prey. They prey on, like, really, really vulnerable individuals. Like, I'm not vulnerable. I am a, tippy, a ticking time bomb, though. Like, you never know what you're going to get with me. It's lucky dip every day. Like, yesterday and today, I've been fine. And happy. And pleasant but tomorrow I can be bitch of the world again so I don't know there's no I guess there's no like middle ground it's like one extreme to the next yeah so um today and yesterday were days where it was extremely easy to get, to get out of bed to get out of bed I mean like I woke up and I did two loads of laundry i was out of bed and showered by like 2 or 3 p.m that's because like i'm dealing with like my shit in my own way and i just know how to turn pain into power as well and i know how to make this to help other people so this is just a um just another example of like the importance of self-love and how not to end up with the wrong person and get murdered so um as i like as i've said before as i've said many times before like you know the best revenge is no revenge whatsoever because spiritually and karmically it's not a good idea to like you know go and seek revenge on people because like no matter what you do it goes into your akashic record whether you want to believe that or not it does i don't care what you believe it just does like nothing nothing upsets or makes psychopaths narcissists sociopaths even more angry than actually healing and being happy because they're like, well, how, how fucking dare that person be happy after I did all of that to traumatize them because I'm so fucking broken and empty and I want them to be the same as me. Exactly. So, um, yeah, just, just understand that everyone's 
journey is unique and different. And that's why I always say, like, be kind to people because you never know what you never know what they are going through or what they are dealing with. So it's important to be kind always. There is so much strength and power in kindness. I don't I don't know how it can be used as a weakness, but you know, psychopaths like will find anything to use as a weakness against someone, I guess. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I still have um, a lot of, I still have a lot to do. I have to get ready for battle again. Uh, who knows what the fuck? I mean, like, I already know what I'm up against. I'm just, yeah, just, just getting ready for it. I am just getting ready for it. Oh my god, Nisha Divine Terror, this just came off my YouTube. This is crazy because we're just, we're just talking about this now. The narcissist wants you to stay upset because that way they can energy vamp off you. That's why the narcissist have so much energy while dealing with you. Then first they was drained, then boom, you're drained, and then they have so much energy. you got to pull your energy all the way back, especially if they're coming in groups. <coughs> coming at me in groups? I screamed my head off last night because I yelled at that dirty ass bitch that lives in the apartment building across from me. And I screamed at her and I said, I can't remember what I said because it was like really late at night. And man, I saw what you look like. You are so fat. You are fatter than I am. You are like a Mack truck. And you shit yourself so bad, so bad. Cause I sort here, sat here, and I can see. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to um, open up the windows and the curtain because I didn't want the smoke alarm to go off because it was like 12, 1 in the morning, and that smoke alarm is so loud. Like my my whole head vibrates when it goes off. That's how loud it is. And so I sat here. I can see right into a, her apartment. And it echoes here at night because it's so quiet. She went into the person's room and they said something. And then I called her a dirty ass bitch. I said, can you ratchet bitches stay the fuck out of my life thanks and then they shit themselves and then i was just like calling her a dirty ass bitch and everything but yeah she is a mac truck she is a mac truck i actually feel better about myself because she is fat so yeah i'm actually not intimidated by or scared by any of you that are coming at me in groups because i see what you look like I see you all the time when you stalk me. You're by yourselves. You're not with family, other loved ones. You're always by yourselves because no one wants to fucking be around you because you're disgusting. So I'm not fucking scared of any of you. I mean, like, yeah. I am just so proud of how brave I've been this year. Because never in a thousand years would I have thought that I would actually be dealing with fucking serial killers in my life. But I am. And you're just couch potatoes. Oh, there are police sirens going off. <gasps> Cherub Rock by the Smashing Pumpkins just came up my YouTube. So I'm always excited about music, right? I listened to Iron Maiden for the first time. I mean, like, I know who Iron Maiden are. I mean, like, 
who doesn't know who I am? But I've never actually listened to their music. And one of Iron Maiden's songs came up. It was called like Wasted Love or something. I love Iron Maiden. So I'm going to get off here in a sec. Open another beer. Relax and listen to some more Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. I love. I, I like metal. I like metal. I like metal. I do like metal. Iron Maiden are pretty cool. I like Iron Maiden. Well, the one song that I did listen to this morning, I loved, so I'm going to listen to them more. I'm still into Metallica. I love Metallica now. I'm so glad that I um, have been listening to them more and more recently. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just scrolled past Tomorrow by Silver Chair, the Australian version. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe to no. Maybe tomorrow. Um, I'm spending the day with my poopsies tomorrow. Our family dog, because I miss them so much. Because I miss them so much. And this is such good advice. When you're going through like a lot of stress and anxiety and trauma in your life if you don't have a pet either get a plant or a pet a small pet because they lower your stress levels i don't know about the whole plant thing like why people recommend to get plants but they do i couldn't keep my plant alive though well it was a tomato bush and i forgot about it so, um, yeah, for, um, you know, people going through trauma that have been through trauma that still get, get PTSD, that are still like, I'm unsure of whether I should date, where I shouldn't date, or whatever. Well, like I said, like I said, counselling. That's the thing with the plant. That is the thing with the plant, I think, is if you buy a small plant and if you can maintain it, or if you can look after it and it's fine, then you're ready to like start dating. I, I still don't know how that, who knows, who knows about that? Um, well, you know, counseling, counseling first, but just remember, just remember that no one can no one can heal your trauma for you. You have to do that by yourself. And just remember, like, well, if you tell whoever you're dating with what you've been through, the right person will love you the right way. A psychopath will <laughs> use that as your weakness. And then you'll be even more traumatized from that i'm fine by myself i'm fine by myself i'm fine by myself i like being by myself and it's going to take like it's going to like if i want to be in a relationship with someone it's um going to have to be someone really 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 special with everything that i went through I, when I was at the stage where I was like, I really, really, really want to have a baby, I knew that I could do it on my own and I wanted to do it on my own because of, uh, yeah, things that I went through with my, with that psycho stepdad. Yeah. So I'm just like, eh, I can do it by myself. I can. So now, because it's raining, I love when it rains, I would like to be snuggling with someone in bed, canoodling, but I'm also fine by myself. So, yeah. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, I just don't think I can talk about this anymore. I'm not a shrink.
But this is just some friendly and loving advice. Okay? If you... I am so proud of a lot of you that I follow on Instagram that have gone through traumatic events. And the things that you do, like for other people, after like everything you've been through, like I am just so amazed by you all. And I love you. I'm so proud of you. <sighs> so proud. <sighs> I'm gonna cry. Don't make me cry. So, um,. Yeah, until if I don't check in tomorrow, then it'll be like the day after. So, yeah. Until next time, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, be kind. Those are my three instructions. I don't think that's too much to ask, though. I don't think it's too much to ask. Just ignore the fuckheads. Just ignore the piece of shit. They're hiding who the fuck knows what. <clears throat> that. Huh. Whew. Whew. That's why I just ignore them. It's just like. F fuck off. <clears throat> I mean, like, they, they set up people to get murdered to get, like, insurance or something. It's fucked. It is fucked. It is fucked. They're criminal minded as well. That's why I don't take anything they do or say, like, you know, personally. So, um, yeah. That's all for tonight, folks.